Well, good day, everyone, and how's it going? Today, we have a Lexus ES330, and it's getting a ton of stuff. First up is the head unit. We got this guy here, Pioneer MVH 2300 NEX. They want smartphone integration. That's the one to go with. They don't care about CDs or DVDs. Rockford Fosgate, punch series components up front and coaxials in the rear. And then Paul sold them the Pioneer GMD 9605 five-channel amplifier to power the whole system up. We just got the car in. We dressed it all up, put our seat covers, steering wheel covers, sock over the gear shifter. We got our lights in place. What we're doing now is we're trying to get a game plan for the car. Anytime you do a car, we don't film this a lot. We spend time figuring out where everything's gonna go. Is stuff gonna fit? We have the right parts for it. So for example, this car's dash, this doesn't have the factory navigation system. So this whole piece right here has to be replaced and it's this funky gray color. So naturally you have to find that part, make sure we have it in stock. Of course we do. It's gonna be a Metra 9981 158G for gray. Then it's integration. Is it gonna need an antenna adapter like this guy right here, the BAA44? Obviously it's gonna need some kind of a smart harness. Maybe, well, does it have steering wheel controls? It does. Chances are good it's gonna need some form of a smart harness. So first off, Paul handed me this, the RP4.2 TY11. Is it gonna need this? It might not, because we're not retaining the radio or the factory amplifier. It just might need steering wheel controls. So once we get the radio out, we'll figure that out. It doesn't have a backup camera or anything like that to retain. It might not need all that, which would save the customer money. Now, Fernando's in the trunk. What are you doing to this car, man? Hello. And what he's trying to do is figure out where we're gonna put this amplifier, because it's not gonna go underneath the seats. So we need some location keep it out of the way so that they can have this trunk space. Yep. This is a girl's car and she's going to fill it with all kinds of fun and excitement. You know, shoes, water bottles, empty coffee cups. Actually, I'm surprised. Homework. It's clean. I think they just got it. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So yeah, this was actually a cleaned out car. All it had in it was some of her homework. Pretty good there. We know what this is gonna look like in like two months, so it's cool. We just wanna keep everything you know, hidden like we always do. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start pulling off door panels, cause this has a component in it where there's a mid base here and a tweeter here, and then the rear is just a coaxial. We wanna get the door panels off and make sure that the speaker sizes we have are correct. Even though you go online and you check and you've done them before, that doesn't mean that they're gonna be the right size. The other thing too is do we need to make panels? More than likely, yeah, we're gonna make some kind of a panel. We're gonna get the doors off so I can start routering out panels, making more dust over here. We might already have the panels on the rack over here because we've done these before. And then of course, once we get to that point, we're gonna have to figure out where we're coming through the firewall. Depending on what side of the car the amplifier goes on, we may have to drill, come up the passenger side, and there is a boot, or we might have to come up the driver's side. There might not be a boot, we might have to drill a hole. So there's a lot of things to think about. Once we get the radio out, we have to figure out where we're gonna put the USB. USB. Are they gonna use an aux jack? Probably not anymore. Who uses aux jack still? Don't answer that because I know some of you out there still doing it's fine. But the radio has Bluetooth, it has Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, so we're thinking that more than likely they're gonna use that. There's a lot of things to process before we get to the fun of what we actually show you guys. I just thought I'd spend a moment talking about that. Now let's go ahead and get the radio out and start down this little rabbit hole. All right, so to take the radio out, first thing we're gonna do is, of course, go to the instruction manual. This is always a great place to start. Metro gives you really good instructions with their kits. Probably the best thing about their products. It's gonna walk you through the steps needed in order to get this thing out. First thing we need to do is, of course, pull up on the center console here. Go ahead and lift that out. Put the emergency brake on. We'll go ahead and get out gear shifter cover unlock. Remember, put these things in your pocket so you don't lose them. Just has one nice plug. So there's five clips that hold this in place here. Now there's four 10 millimeter bolts across the bottom of the radio that hold this whole thing in place. Now what we need to do is get to the factory amplifier because we're gonna have to bypass it for this. I believe it's behind the glove box. So that's where we're headed next. You know, they should just rename the glove box the place where you keep all your crap. Number two, because number one is the armrest. Number two is definitely the glove box. All right, so now that we have the glove box out of the way, we can get to this guy right here. This box with this is our factory amplifier. 
And this is the plug we need right here. With this, we'll be able to get all our speaker wire. I'm gonna go get a reverse harness so that we can plug into this. Might have to make something, not real sure. I'm gonna go check now, I'll be right back. So through the magic of video editing, I'm back and I have this guy right here. This is a 7712. This is a Honda Isuzu harness. And this guy here is going to plug right in. There we go. Naturally, we're gonna have to repin it because it is not the right pin configuration. There is wiring in all the holes though so i mean if you don't want to you don't have to i'm going to let's go ahead and we'll get this all apart and we'll start toning this out to figure out what's what uh, this is a standard toyota colors here so if you're aware of the standard toyota colors then you're ahead of the game and you don't have to worry about it but for the rest of us we'll go ahead and do it the hard way so we're gonna go ahead and get these out of here Now, if you'd like to pick up one of these cool pin extraction tool sets that we like to use here, by all means do. We have a link to it on Dean and Fernando's tool drawer at dnftooldrawer.com. So we have all our wires out. What we want to do now is grab our speaker pairs. And let's head over to the car and we will figure it out. Now we are going to need a couple tools to do this. We're going to use the PT9A, this guy, and our portable polarity checker so that we'll be able to just plug these things in at the amplifier and start the tick tick sound and we'll just go around and we'll do it all in one shot. Now you could do this with a tone generator or once you get the doors off, you could just see what colors are in the doors and decide at that point. There's, so there's, there's several methods in order to do this. We're just going to use this one today, but you've seen us use different ones. There's always more than one way to skin a cat, as they say. The way this plug is set up is that it's in pairs. Moving from like this side here back is a pair, is a pair, is a pair. All we have to do is grab the first two wires, plug this guy in, turn it on. That's that cool ticking sound. So we grab the wrong two wires in that they're backwards. That means that the blue wire is negative and the green wire is positive. Check it again. Yep, we're blinking green. Now we can take our harness. This is broken into a set of pairs. So it goes two, then the main harness, and then a set of one. What we can see here is that's the same way. We want to grab our grays and we will go ahead and plug them in accordingly. So it's gonna go like that. Now, if you're asking, why did we pick the grays? How a stereo is set up is there's the four color wires, the white, the gray, the green, the purple. White is driver's front, which we call one. Gray is passenger front which we call two. Green is driver's rear three. Purple is passenger rear four. Let's move on to the next pair. Now, now that we know which end is positive, more than likely it is going to stay that way. Every now and then a car manufacturer will throw you for a loop, but most of the time they'll keep the positives on one side and the negatives on the other. I'm gonna go over to the other side of the car. Cool. So the positive and negative are in the same location, so we'll go ahead and plug those in. And I also, while I was over there, I checked the polarity on the tweeter to make sure that the tweeter was in polarity with the mid-range. And it was, so that's a good thing. Now we'll go ahead and go to the next two. These should get us into the rears. I'll be right back. And that was the purple set. And lastly, we have the green. So our plug is all made. Let's move on to the next step. So what I wanna do now is check and see if the car has accessory here at the plug. I'm pretty sure it does, but I wanna test because I really don't think we need the smart harness for this because we're not doing anything other than steering wheel controls that would need that. We're not turning on the amplifier. We're not doing a backup camera, so we don't need reverse trigger. We don't need VSS. We don't need emergency brake. We really don't need any of that stuff. So this shows 12 volts. All right, that's constant 12 volts. Turn the car back on. All right, we have another 12 volts. That is clearly accessory. And we have illumination. Now let's go over to the bench and we will find a wiring harness that works with this and see if the Pack Audio CP2 works with this car as well. If you go to pack-audio.com, you can put in your make, model, and year, and it'll give you all the parts that are needed for your car. In this case, a BHA8113 is the harness we need for behind the radio. And really, it, it has like the amplifier portion, but we're not gonna be using that, so we'll go ahead and remove that. Really, all we need are these, and the blue white isn't even there, so we just need these four wires right here off of this harness. So now what we wanna do is go to our phone and go to the Control Pro app for Pack, and and check and see if this will work. Select the CP2 and then input our information.
The first thing it's gonna give you is your dip switch configuration, which we'll talk about in a minute. We're gonna go to next. All right, so next is going to give us the harness, as well as the wiring, as well as the second harness. We want pin six, seven, and eight. Six, seven, and eight on harness one. Should be a red, black, an orange, and a purple. Let's head over to the car and check. All right, so off of C1 harness, we need ground, constant 12 volts, and accessory. And then this pin six here, this is a typo, sure, because actually it's gonna be that six. So I'm thinking they split this wrong. So we're gonna need a black red, a pink, and a green white on the secondary harness, which is right here. And I can see our black red, our pink black, and our green white. So we know now that we can just use the CP2 to retain the steering wheel controls. We aren't gonna need control pro because we're not keeping the amplifier. Now since we already have the app launched, this app will stay open like this until you physically close your Oh, kind of one of the nice features about it, although it will drain your battery to get about it. But if you're trying to find this in the car and you have to keep taking your eyes away from it, it is nice that your phone doesn't constantly go to sleep. Select the back button. On the side, you have these little dip switches here and you have these dip switches here. Now there's arrows telling you which way is up and down and then these little white switches are what they're pointing to. So the first one in this case would be up, then down, then up, up, down, up, down, up, and then the first three down on the second row. Sounding like a cool dance move. Now what we want to do is go ahead and put some tape over it so that these things don't get bumped and we know that we've set it. All right, the reason why we picked the CP2 as opposed to like an SWIRC is because this allows us to do multi-touch, meaning we can program one button to do two things and seeing how this is a Android Auto Apple CarPlay radio we're gonna need as many buttons as we can get so we can do like voice answer phone hang up and stuff like that so it comes with two harnesses in the box we have this guy here which is what plugs into the back of the radio so for Alpine Pioneer most of the radios out there they're gonna use this eighth inch style like this and then JVC and Kenwood are gonna use this guy here this is the blue yellow we'll go ahead and since we're doing a Pioneer we're just gonna go ahead and remove this blue yellow here now one of the things I like about this harness is that you don't have to destroy the wire to take it out. You don't have to like cut it or anything like this. There's little push pins here that you can just simply push down and remove the wire you don't want. All right, so now we can put this into our wiring harness box and save it for later if we need it. And of course, we're gonna go ahead and plug this into here so that this doesn't get lost in the shuffle while we're doing this install. Go ahead and select next. Now what this is gonna do is this is gonna take us to the wires we need out of this harness. So as you scroll up, this side here is for this. Let's go ahead and get all this tape off of here. All right, so we're going to need two black, which the blacks are pinned together. So there's actually two black wires coming out of the black. We're gonna need the red, we're gonna need the yellow, and then we're gonna need white and white black. All this other ones we're not gonna need. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those too. All right, so now we have just the wires that we're gonna need for this car. Next, we wanna go over to our 8113, and we wanna remove the wires off of this that we're not gonna need. All right, there again, if you want to save these for parts, go right ahead. Now we have our two harnesses stripped down to the bare essentials as far as what we're going to need for this install. I'm going to take my whites and one of my blacks, and I'm going to twist those into a bundle. And we'll do the same with our other bundle. Now I'm gonna add a extra ground to this because most of the time these Toyota grounds are pretty terrible and I'd rather be safe and ground it someplace else than rely on using the ground that's in this harness. There again, better to be safe than sorry. So now what we wanna do is go ahead and grab the harness or in this case, our Pioneer, and get it ready to attach to our harness here. So we're not gonna be using any of the speaker wires on here, so what we wanna do as always is make sure we cap these things off because we don't want them touching anything in the dash. And cap them off individually. Don't just take the whole group of them, twist them all together and put some tape around them. Cap each one off all by itself. So we went ahead and made those secure. This is the reverse light trigger. We're not doing a reverse on this car, but I don't want to just tape it into the harness and lose it. Now what we have are the six wires to hook up to these six wires. We went ahead and added in a micro bypass as well. And this is our remote turn on that's gonna run over to the glove box because there's really gonna be nothing behind the radio other than this our RCA. So now all we wanna do is go ahead and solder these all together and call this portion of the job done. 
So harness is all set. This is gonna plug into the car. This is going to that C2 connector. These are gonna have to be soldered in. They don't make a plug for that. This is our ground. Obviously, we know what this is. This is the remote turn on wire that's gonna go out to the glove box where the factory amplifier is, where we're gonna get all our speaker wires. This is gonna plug into the back of the radio. For the amplifier bracket, we're going to use these baits right here. We're gonna make a template. It's gonna be the size of this. And then we're gonna make an L. We're gonna hold it with bolts with this existing hose the tray already has. So the amplifier is gonna sit right here. Wires are gonna go behind. She's gonna able to keep the space, no problem. So Fernando's been working hard on the amp rack. Let's go ahead and take a look at what he has come up with. This is the bracket. So that's the back driver's corner pocket. That's yes. what this is here. That's the tray, yeah. What we do is add half inch centra, and in the back is a quarter inch. We put some bolts in it. So the idea was to not make new holes, so we right. just put these eighth inch ABS washers here to hold it in place so that yeah. we can just take this back out and it'll be factory. So what was here? This? That was here, yes. Okay. So that's why we made the template for this, basically. And this too. Did you just say basically? Basically. Basically. <laughs> Now then the carpet will be able to go back over this. Let's take it in the trunk of the yeah. car and see what it looks like. Alright, so this one go like this. The mats go like that. Oh, that's cool. This one so there's a bolt that holds the tray in, right? Yes, that's a 10 millimeter. And this one's gonna go like this. Well, that'll look good. Yeah. For those of you at home keeping score, we have the amplifier all set and ready to bypass. We have that plug ready to go. We now know where the amplifier is gonna go. We have the radio harness made. Next is getting the doors apart and figure out what's going there. And Fernando is gonna go ahead and start figuring out how he's gonna run the wiring. Lots of fun still to come. This is the factory speaker that we're taking out of the car. Of course, this is a unique shape for Lexus or Toyota. We've done it before. I found this one on the shelf, which is exactly the right size. This cool Superman looking speaker. What we're gonna put in is the six and a half inch Rockfords. Originally, he'd given us the six inch. We're gonna go with the six and a halfs because we have a lot more room. So that is the P165SIs. What we wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're going to make this piece. We're gonna make two of these out of quarter inch. And then we're going to take these guys right here. These are are the BKSG 650DXs. These are half inch spacers that Best Kits makes. And we're going to attach it to it just like this, and then we're gonna go ahead and put it in the door, and that will clear the window. All right, for these, we've gone ahead and cut two squares of quarter inch centra. They're going to stack on top of one another. Let's take it over the router and router this out. Apart. But first, let's give them a nice round over. All right, let's 
Let's get them over the bench and put them together. All right, they cleared the window, so all is well there. We're gonna go ahead and put some foam on the back so it gets a nice, good, rattle-free connection. Now, normally we'd be putting foam on the front of this too. The nice thing about Rockford is Rockford actually foams their baskets for you, so you don't actually have to do it. So now we have this all set and ready to go. What we want to do now is drill a hole up here where the factory connection is. This is a component, so we have this separate tweeter that's in this bag. What's neat about these particular speakers, and equally annoying, is that the crossover over for the tweeters built into the basket of the speaker. So it looks like it's like a dual voice coil subwoofer. And what you have is the input coming in here from the door, and then this loops around, and this is gonna be the output that goes up to the tweeter. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna solder on some wires here so that we can get it into the door and screwed in. So what we've gone ahead and done here is we have this pink and purple wire. This is the factory color, so we'll be able to just match these up to the factory color. And then we've run a red and black that's gonna go up to the tweeter. So we're gonna put some quick disconnects here so that we'll be able to remove the door panel because the tweeter's actually in the door panel. But other than that, we've had this all set and ready to go. So let's get this over to the door and screw it on. This is the factory tweeter. We've gone ahead and removed it off the door. There's three screws that hold this bracket in place. And then this tweeter conveniently screws into the back. Go ahead and pull the screw on this. Now let's go ahead and get our Rockford tweeter. So our Rockford tweeter is very similar to this tweeter in that it has a screw provision on the back. And of course, this screw is too small, but Rockford does give you screws to work with. Go ahead and work this guy in here like this. Now right now it's just gonna stick to it because it's a magnet. I'm gonna take it over and test fit it into the door. All right, it fits perfect. So all we gotta do is get this glue off of here, mount this tweeter into here. So there we go, it's mounted in place. That's what we got. Pretty sexy. And then again, it just screws right back in, all factory, awesome. So this is what it looks like once it's all put back together. And these will go ahead and plug into the wiring that we have in the door. So we have the rear doors off and it's the exact same speaker as the front door. So we've gone ahead and made another set of the templates we made for the front door. And for the rear door, we're gonna go ahead and do the coaxial. This is the P1650. So let's go ahead and get this in here, get the door back on, because Fernando needs me to get out of the way. Got that hole in the firewall? And it's better when it's double, double metal. Double metal is a joy. I like double metal. Yes, me Gives too. you a real shoulder workout. Makes you yeah. want to pass out. Push that through. Is it my hand? No, update. Speakers are all in the doors. Fernando's just got the wire all to the front of the car from the back, good job. Let's take a look at the amplifier real quick. So the amplifier's in and mounted, the carpet's back up in place. All the wires go through this slit that he cut here. Subwires ran out here. Over here is the end of it. All the other wires ran up through through that grommet right there. And then just kind of comes down this, this side right here. And that's where it splits once it gets here. The power wire is zip tied going forward and then the signal and the speed wire is coming up that's the RCA right there. We're getting ready to insulate that. But right now, I'm gonna go over to this side and we're going to connect the speaker harness up to the speed wire. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and solder our speed wire together to our harness. So we're just gonna drape it up in there and just leave it for right now because we still have the remote turn on wire to run over. I don't wanna put double zip ties up there. That usually just looks like crap. So I'm gonna go grab the actual wiring harness now off my workbench and put that in.
We're hooked into the amplifier. We have a remote turn on run. Now what we need to do is finish running the RCA up to the dash over here. And we'll be all set and then we can get the dash back in. Fernando's finishing up the battery right now. Everything is going pretty well. So this install is cruising along and we're making great progress. And then I'm like, wait a minute, I haven't even built the dash kit yet. I know, totally threw me for a loop. I'm gonna stop what I'm doing over there. I'm gonna take time to build this dash kit because we're really at the point to where we need it. From the factory, what we need is these silver pieces here. These need to come off as well as these air vents. There's little plastic tabs and then they just slide out. All right, so I'm assuming we're also gonna need these yellow tabs here because there aren't any in the bag, so we'll go ahead and pull those off. All right, so we have the front fascia made. Now the second half of this is going to be these brackets here that are going to hold the radio in place, but it's not gonna be attached to the front fascia. White is going to go to the pink black. All right, black goes to black red, and then the white black comes over here and goes to this green white. Now what we want to do is make sure that we hang this stereo control interface down here into the bottom because uh, we're going to reprogram it more than likely. We'll check to make sure, but if we're going to reprogram it, we want to make sure we have access to it. All right, so just going everything over real quick. Fernando, speakers are in, amps in, fuses in, stereo controls are hooked up, amp is bypassed, remote turn on is hooked up, USB is in the armrest, Bluetooth mic is in, fuse right. holder is done. We good? Yep. All right, let's plug this thing in. All right, so with this, make sure that it is lining up straight, left, right, all that, because you can make these adjustments with the kit in. That's Kind of the one nice thing. All right, I'm gonna grab the air conditioner, just plug it in, and then we're gonna do some testing. So on their steering wheel, they have volume up and down, track up and down, and mode. What we'll do is we'll make mode the VR button so that they can have voice with this. So what we wanna do is we're gonna remap them, and how you do it is you do it in order. We've done this before, We've, it's the same on all of these. So you're gonna start here, volume up, volume down, mute. And there's a button on the side of this. If you don't want that feature, you skip it. If you wanna make something a double feature, you press and hold the button, and then it'll blink. Go ahead and we'll start with volume up, volume down, mute, preset, preset, source, Track up, track down, band, phone menu, answer, and voice. All right, and if you got it right, when you hit the last button, it'll blink a bunch of times. Let's go ahead and turn it up, turn it down, press and hold, should be mute. Tracks, that's all working. All right, let's plug our phone in and see what it does. What's the weather like today? The VR button's working for mode. All right, so we just polarity checked everything. 
as you can tell from the beep the, the pulsing sound everything checked out good everything's moving the same direction so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and finish getting the glove box on get this floor together and then we're going to do a little bit of tuning For the subwoofer, they're just doing a 112 box. We've already seen the amplifier. The radio is in. That's what that dash kit looks like. There is a slight color difference between this dash kit and that panel, So, but otherwise, uh, it looks pretty good. But now, as we said, it's time to give it a listen to, make sure everything's doing what it needs to do. So not everyone wants to listen to their stereo the same way. Everyone has their own personal taste as far as what they're trying to get out of a system. So not everyone wants us to sit in their car, give them a center channel, fake you know this the center image, and make it sound like uh, Maroon 5 is coming out of the, the perfect you know three inches off the windshield and the whole nine. That's not what everybody's after. Some people just want to get into their car, crank it up and have it just sound really good loud. That's what we're trying to do in this one. We're just adjusting the EQ a little bit. Crossover set back at the amplifier. It's an NEX radio, which is nice because it comes shipped with the subwoofer off, so we can listen to it that way. Make sure that the speakers in the doors aren't bottoming out. We didn't do roadkill on this one, so that's kind of a bummer, but there again, not everyone is into that. I know, right? Who wouldn't be? But yes, you, when you explain to them the benefits and they still don't want it, you just move forward with life what you have to do. We've got this one about where we want it. We're gonna listen to a couple more songs, turn on and off the subwoofer. I'm pretty sure we got the speakers in the doors at about eh, 100, 120, so they're sounding really good. It's a tad bit higher than I like to put them, but there again, she's already told us that this is a balls to the wall all day long system, so we're going to set it up that way. All right, this one is loud. My ears are ringing as if they didn't already ring enough. So should be able to play this system really loud and enjoy it uh, and lose her hearing like we did too. All right, cool. Well, Brando, is this the end of it? This is the end of it. This is the end of it. I'd like to say on to the next one, but yeah. this one took all day, so there is no next one. There's tomorrow. Anyways, you guys have a great night as always. We'll see you later next time. Hi. I can't hear. What was that? My ears are ringing. I can't exactly. hear nothing.